Okay, we are uh, excited for today. We are going to go to a friend's house, Amanda, who's lovely and owns Pender Island Chocolates here on Pender. Um, but she's also one of the local beekeepers who is going to teach us uh, all about beekeeping today. So we're going to go check that out. We've got our own bees that are coming uh, in the spring. So before we do, we want to make sure we know what we're doing. Let's go check it out. Okay, so as we said, we're here at uh, Amanda's house and we're going to check out some, some bee equipment and figure out all the things that we're going to need to get from the spring and see if we can't learn a thing or two before we jump into it like we're kind of notorious for doing so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're here with Amanda. She's going to show us uh, some of the equipment that she's got. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Thanks for doing this. <laughs> no problem. So, the first thing that I suggest you get is something to protect yourself against the bees. Good idea. This is a suit. You can get like... This is a full body suit. Yeah. You can get uh, just a shirt and a, like a jacket and a little hood, or you can just get the hood, or you can totally go to whatever thrift store yeah. and purchase little bits. It you just kind of make your own. Yeah, yeah, the more made your own, the more likely you are to get stuck. How often does yeah. that happen? <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna jinx myself when yeah. I say I don't think <laughs> yeah. I've been stung for maybe four years. Okay. Right. So I use a suit that is white because nothing that is a predator to the honeybees is white. Right. They don't have polar bears ripping apart their hive, so they don't associate the color with any kind of danger. Whereas if you're wearing black, then they think you're a bear. And then I usually wear um, boots that are higher up and then everything has elastics. Right. And otherwise they fly in. One of the things that I'm really afraid of is being in the beehive and then seeing a bee like on the inside of my bee. Oh my yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, don't want that, I don't think. So uh, figure out what you need as cool. far as honeybee sting protection goes. And then you need a hive tool because the bees use um, a glue from the sap of the trees called propolis to glue everything together. Hmm. And so it makes everything really sticky. So you need something to pry things apart. Okay. I've used a flathead screwdriver when I didn't have enough money to buy this. Okay. These are little um, entrance reducers. So from the ground up, you've got bottom boards. So the kind of bottom board this is is a screened bottom board. Yep. And the idea with the screen bottom boards is that the bees come in right here okay. and that the mites fall off and go onto the screen and then they can't crawl back up onto the bees. Okay. And then you can pull this out and scrape it off and you can kind of check health of the hive by what's on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All so right. from the ground up, this is the bottom board. They usually cost about thirty or forty dollars okay. each. Then you go to the next thing, which is the super. So this box is called a super, mm -hmm. and usually you start with one. These super sizes you can get different sizes. So you can get ones that are deep, but they're really heavy, and uh, I'm not very mm. big. <laughs> <laughs> and so when the hives are filled with honey, like one of these things can weigh about 80 pounds wow. and you're lifting them like over and up. So I've gone all the, this is called the medium size or the datant size. All of my stuff is datant because then I can interchange them. But what other people do, like Aaron, he'll have deeps as the brood boxes and then the datant size, the medium size is the honey supers. Right. And so then he kind of changes them out that way. But I don't ever have to worry about it. It's like I'm using the same Lego piece for every mm -hmm. piece of the construction. What you have on the top is you have an outer cover. This one is also called a telescoping cover. Mm -hmm. Then you have an inner cover. So usually this is like right here. Okay. okay. Then you have the supers and then you have the frames. And the frames, usually you have about 10 frames in a box, but sometimes you can have eight if you don't want it to be as crowded. Okay, so this would be like a frame that has honey on it. thing that is capped yep. is honey, and then you can see that it's different colors. So this will be like probably spring stuff. And then this is the blackberry honey right here that's dark. Oh, Ooh. interesting. So it's like more purple when you scrape it out. And the honey will actually be purple. Yeah, it's a bit purple and it cool. tastes a little bit blackberry. Yeah. And then this side, you can see like it's liquidy in here. Yeah. So they haven't evaporated all of this. So we don't want to extract this stuff because it'll ferment. Okay. Because the moisture content is too high, but you could get all this stuff and you can see like how it's like different colors right through mm -hmm. here. And you could take all that stuff. Neat. That yeah, so awesome. when it's done, they kind of cure it. They fan off all the moisture and then when it's done, they put a wax capping on. Okay. Cool. And then that's how you know, it'll keep... So any circle with a wax capping has honey in it, that's... 
yeah. finished product kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I were scraping this and harvesting this, I would harvest it this way, yeah. and then I wouldn't touch this stuff. Right. And I would try really hard not to get it with the other honey. Mm -hmm. And then I put it through a cheesecloth. And then you can pasteurize it if you're worried, um, but I don't. Right. Because the moisture content is so low that um, it's really rare for something to be growing in it. So this one's without. Oh, thank you. That's like, I don't know, yeah. quarter of a pound. Like it's pretty, pretty light, light, yeah. And then this is the one with honey. Wow, what a difference, yeah, eh? Yeah, it's pretty heavy. You wouldn't think that that much honey would weigh that much, would you? Yeah, that's why these boxes get you so go small, heavy. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah. That's actually crazy. Any questions? So, yeah, one of the things for, for us is kind of where we're going to place it around the property. Yeah. Because um, we've got a pretty windy windy area where we are, so I know you kind of want to protect it from that, but you also want it, don't want it in a damp area. Yeah, totally. What well, kind of do you look for? Where, uh, so what you want to have is a hive that is south facing, if you can have it at all possible. Yep. Um, and you want to have where the sun hits it really early in the morning, okay. um, because then it makes the bees get up. Right. Otherwise they sleep in too long and then they lose <laughs> some of their, their time. Like so this. usually I have the hive facing out this way. Yeah. <clears throat> and you don't want to have it any place where you have to walk in front because they don't like people being in their flight path. They'll mm -hmm. get irritated and they'll sting you often. Right. Mm -hmm. In the winter and it's raining lots, you just kind of have that top piece on the... Yeah, on and that I and it's tilt the hives just a little bit so that the entrance is lower here and a little bit higher the back is a little bit higher so yep. then it drains out right. so any moisture because there's a lot of moisture in the hives and yep. um, because they're always evaporating honey right and they create quite a bit of heat you want the moisture to be able to drain out so a lot of the problems with keeping bees on the west coast is that they get too damp right and then you have a lot of mold in there and then if the hive is tilted at all back then it can pool in the one side and it can make the bees sick mm -hmm. so you want it to be able to all drain, drain out the front Okay. Yeah. Well, it's good to know that it can be this close to the house too, because that was the other thing. It was like we didn't want them to be too close to the house if they're going to be kind of buzzing around everywhere. But uh, we've kind of got an area like this that we could put it out front, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like when the bees swarm, they kind of cloud up right here, and mm. we like sit on the bottom steps and just watch them until they're done. Right. Um, and then try to collect them. So sometimes when we're on the deck, there's like a lot of bees around, but they're not interested in us at that point at all. Right. We can we eat up there and. Yeah. Have you had issues with that and the wasps killing the bees and yeah. yeah. Ongoing battle? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else we need to know is total newbies or <laughs> things we should be aware of? Mm. Yes, a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we'll do more studying before they come, we promise. Yeah, they actually um use trees so much more than we think. Oh really. So the maples are the first things that kind of bloom in February, March, and so then that they really go for the maple trees. Yeah. And then the maple honey is fantastic. Well, yeah. I'm sure it'll be a learning curve no matter how much studying we do, but uh, yeah, I'm it'll be fun. For it. It's really lovely yeah. atmosphere with the bees. Like you have to kind of check yourself before you go up to them because if you're really anxious and you just have to get something done, yeah. then the bees get really reactive they and they sting it. more. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. if you're calm and you come to them slowly and you have mm -hmm. enough time and it's careful and it's beautiful and sunny and it smells so good, and then everything is way better. Okay. How long um, have you been doing this? Uh, 13 years. Wow. wow. Yeah, I moved to Pender to keep bees. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I moved here to keep bees and, um, because I couldn't keep them in the basement suite I was living in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, and everybody was really enthusiastic. So then I had bees. I had, um, almost 30 hives in about 15 or 16 locations all over Pender and I was trying to do it as my job. So I was working at the insurance office and then I went on maternity leave and poured everything into making this bee empire. Yeah, yeah it's not cheap to get started, eh? We started looking yeah, at some equipment and stuff and we're like, well, we're gonna have to fork out some money to get uh, to get what we need, but. Yeah, yeah, the suits are about 100. The hives themselves are probably about 300 and right. then the bees themselves are about 200. Right. So that's just for one hive. For one hive yeah. to get started, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. They last pretty well though, eh? Uh, well. I'm not very good at <laughs> not, not the bees, that right like now. the like the hives. Like oh the yeah, actual, the hives yeah, are fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up the sore spot of the bees. I meant the hives. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to show us all this. Yeah, this We're is excited amazing. to uh, get started. I'm sure we'll have lots of questions for you along the way too. Yeah, probably.
Huh? Yeah, what a beautiful process, beekeeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really fun. Cool. Anything else you want to know? I think I'm loaded with knowledge. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm well, sure there's questions that are going to come up on our way to it. So we'll probably be like messaging you every yeah. once in a while yeah, with a list good. of questions. But thank you so much. We yeah, really appreciate yeah, all your course. knowledge and everything you've kind of taught us. And we look forward to the journey. Sounds great. <laughs> Sounds fun. All right. So Amanda gave us one of her frames to harvest the honey from. We're gonna do that today and see how it goes. So first step, we wanna get a bowl with a cheesecloth. Um, this will just kind of separate the honey from the uh, beeswax. We're gonna take our scraper and scrape down the areas that are covered and then leave out the honeycombs that are not covered. Here we go. So excited. So exciting. It's heavy. We haven't decided how we were gonna do this, so <laughs> let's just uh, maybe start with the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sticky. See all that golden honey. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Is your mouth watering? Mine is. <laughs> It is amazing how much it's, heavier the frames are with honey in it. Yeah, they, they are very heavy. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never felt so weak in my life. <laughs> Seal, sealed over honeycombs there on this side. How's it going? My arm is so sore. <laughs> <laughs> My How's arm it going? is so sore. <laughs> start on the other side. I'm sure there's more we can get off of that one, but. that I couldn't but this is probably the coolest thing we've done this whole challenge in my opinion right I am so excited for yeah. this year we're gonna have honey this is so crazy sweet <laughs> how is it my teeth hurt <laughs> <laughs> from the sweetness yeah Okay, so we got all the honey in our cheesecloth here, and it's just draining out um, and separating the honey from the honeycomb. Um, we're gonna figure out a way to hold this up so the honey drains just uh, straight out and keeps the honeycomb out of the honey. And then once we're done, we're gonna put it in a jar, keep it in the fridge, and enjoy it every second of the day. Looks <laughs> <laughs> so good. Nom nom nom. Mm. Good? The best honey I've ever tasted. <laughs> okay, well, this is what we uh, came up with because we didn't really have anything to hang it. So our blender and our soda stream are making a very nice um, hanging device. I don't really know, <laughs> but the honey is flowing out gorgeously and it looks like just liquid gold. So. Come back in a little while and we'll see how much we get out of this thing. Sometimes I just catch stuff doing the weirdest things. <laughs> what are you doing, babe? Um, just uh, blood drying the honey. <laughs> blood drying the honey? <laughs> I'm hanging for about an hour, probably, would you say? Yeah. Mm, such a nice treat. Alright, so we have tons of leftover beeswax. 
We're going to use this for a cool project. My mom had made us tons of beeswax wraps this year for Christmas and we've been using it so much to reduce our waste. Um, we use it and just wrap it over top of the dish we're trying to uh, preserve and this time it was the quiche that we made which was delicious. Um, they work amazing and we really love to try and do as much zero waste as possible so this has been so great and to be able to do it with our own beeswax will be incredible. We also got tons of honey. Thank you so much Amanda for letting us harvest your honey from your bees. It is amazing and we're super excited to use it in all kinds of baking and uh, possibly just eating it raw. <laughs> Thanks again.